everybody, this is Pam Coey and I'm getting ready for a big solo exhibition at the Moscow Contemporary in Moscow, Idaho. It's October 7th through December 31st. As I prepare for the exhibition, there's so much to do. Anyone who's ever done any type of exhibiting knows that. Uh, everything from finishing the surfaces to the edges, inventory, artist statements, and all these deadlines and things like that. So. Uh, I just wanted to show you uh, kind of backwards how one of my paintings that's going to be in the exhibit came to be because it's kind of unusual. It uses a technique that I have not used before. It uses spray paint and collage and it was a lot of fun and I just enjoyed it so much. So uh, I kind of documented it along the way but I never posted that on YouTube. Now the piece is finished, I'm getting it ready for the show and I thought okay I'll show you the finished painting first and then go backwards and show you how it came to be. Before I do that though, I want to show you a painting that my granddaughter Willa did. She's two and a half years old. She spent a lot of time in my studio just recently and I want to show you what she did. Hang on, I'm going to turn my camera around. I had stretched this canvas the first time I really stretched my own canvas and it's, uh, it is uh, three feet by six feet. And I just want to show this to you because uh, she is just so inspiring to me. I love children's artwork and she spent many days, uh, you know, putting different paint layers on there. I kept bringing out the same canvas and she would just take out new colors. You can see there's some fluorescent colors on there. But she's quite a mark maker already. She loved like just grabbing some of my tools that I gave her and then I gave her tempera paints and uh, all kinds of things. So just wanted to share that with you because I found it so inspiring to watch her paint. Okay, so now I want to show you the painting that we're going to talk about in this video. So this painting is a diptych. Uh, each panel is 48 by 48 inches and I'm calling it Disruption. Uh, the entire exhibition is called Unforeseen and I wrote my artist statement to reflect that the show has been postponed twice due to COVID and finally it's happening, you know, but all the events that happened along the way uh, have contributed to this show. And the reason I want to just kind of talk about this piece now is because the piece will soon be in the exhibition and I want to be showing you how I created this piece. So I need to get like this footage now and show it to you before it's gone out of my studio. Basically, I just want you to notice that there is spray paint, there are stencils, and this is the first time I really did try some spray paint and it's acrylic based. And I got the acrylic based spray paint from, I think it was Dick Blick. I also want to just point out that as in all my work, I try to incorporate the things that I love. So you're going to see grids are common and sometimes drip marks like here's one I'll show you up close. And you know, you're seeing the final painting. It's done now, but I want to show you the process that I took to get here because uh, it was a learning process for me. I've never really worked this way with rice paper and spray paint and then you know it became more collage and then you know all these different things. Along the way I did incorporate a lot of the things that I love. So there are dots of course and there are all these crazy marks and some of these are more like a relief like this was really thick paint that was uh, put onto a layer here. And then I have some of these, you know, it was basically just black and white. And then when I, I started this in the old studio at the Grange and then I brought it to my new studio and it was when I brought it to the new studio that I was, I had the room to actually hang these up and I started to uh, continue to work on it. So it really got finished in the new studio. And that's when I started to collage, you know, some of these pieces here that are line drawings because I really love blind contour drawing and you know some of these weird effects here that happened while I was collaging and you know has some of my uh, just drawing with pencil which I love to do and my stripes which I love. So this this painting really is um, it has a lot of things I love. I called it disruption because of the abrupt nature of this piece which I feel really reflects uh, you know how we all felt during COVID. Uh, it's, it's not meant to be this calming piece you know giving you a peaceful feeling. It's meant to be kind of jarring and 
create tension. So that's why a lot of things are butting up against another. All right, so I'm gonna show you like the very first stage of how this painting came to be and I hope you enjoy the video. I had this big pad of the Sumi E painting and calligraphy paper that I'd gotten in Portland when I was visiting our son. He lives there. And I thought, okay, well, let me just see what happens if I goof around. So I decided to work with this paper. And these types of paper, actually they're very thin, but they're very strong. And when you collage with them, they kind of become semi-transparent. Even though they look really white and really opaque, they do kind of disappear when you, you know, use like acrylic medium to use them for collage. And now I have a respirator on. I'm not working outside. I'm in my studio. So just word of caution, if you use any type of spray paint, this is the first time I'm using an acrylic spray paint. And I think this is the Montana brand. There are many brands, but I got this at Dick Blick. I'm using black and You'll see uh, in a moment here that I do have my very uncomfortable respirator on, but it's just because uh, I didn't want to breathe in these particles. And usually when you spray too, like I know later on I tried to uh, do this more so that the paper was vertical. I taped it to the wall and I had a little bit easier time spraying. As you can imagine, it's a little hard to spray onto a horizontal surface and get kind of an even coating. But these are the early stages of my experimentation and I learned along the way. This is one of the things I learned. So the paper is 18 by 24 inches and I'm just overlapping paper and I'm getting all kinds of marks. You know, this, I'm using the spray paint as a mark making tool right now. And I'm really enjoying it. Uh, just staying with one color. You know, I didn't, at this point, I didn't have many other colors. I thought, okay, well, let me just see what this is like. They do have different tips, like some of the sprays are like a wider spray. I'd done a test and taken it outside and noticed that there was a tip for a wide spray, a medium spray, and a thin spray. But in any case, I think this is like the medium width. And the paper is quite absorbent and, you know, receptive to the spray paint. And I just kept making, like going through that entire pad of paper, making lots of these types of lines and marks, and it was just really a lot of fun. That's our dog, Vincent. He's my studio buddy. He's always with me. You really have to shake these cans quite a lot, and then to clean the tip, you wanna turn the can totally upside down and spray it until nothing comes out. And that's when you clean the tip out. And if you don't do that, you can clog your tip. But you can also buy extra tips in case that does happen. Or I think if you soak the tip in probably some alcohol that if you scrub it just a little bit, you can unclog that tip. So just again, overlapping papers and just kind of observing the effects. I, what I love about spray paint is that, uh, you know, like unlike all the other types of marks you make with paint and a brush and or handmade tools, you get kind of this uh, very fuzzy edge. And that's what I really love about the spray paint. It's, it's very different. You could, couldn't quite duplicate that, I think, with paint and a brush, at least I haven't been able to. And so I'm fascinated by the fact that I get this type of halo, um, the soft, really soft diffuse edge. It's really fun and playing with all different types of marks and you know how much how much the spray can the paper take before it starts to drip and, and things like that but you can kind of see that this rice paper it's very thin but it can take a lot of spray paint and then I was going to I let every uh, piece of paper dry before I um, adhered it onto the panels so I'm going to be adhering these onto that large diptych I was talking about, which is 48 by 96, so four feet by eight feet. This actually shows how I laid things out. Uh, I wasn't quite sure how I was going to work with these pieces of paper that I just sprayed paint on. So here I am just kind of laying them down over these two large panels that have been gessoed, and I'm I'm just kind of moving them around because I, you know, it's, it's going to be collaged on there and I don't exactly know in what orientation or in, in what way that I want to do it. So 
uh, you have all that flexibility uh, to move these sheets of paper around and see how they how, how these uh, different sheets of paper talk to one another and how they connect or don't connect and you can kind of already see how uh, they don't line up and I, I could have had them line up like these two right here they're lined up but in most cases I didn't want them to line up that was the whole um, thing I was dealing with here and I also knew that when they overlapped I'd get like a little bit of the other one showing underneath it so here's just the the you know laying it out seeing what it's like and I'm deciding that you know it's not it's not gonna matter too much what I do I'm just gonna put some acrylic gloss medium down and adhere these kind of in a random order in other words I'm really not gonna plan it because I love surprise and this method here is a, a wonderful way to invite the unknown um, to invite what feels like a pretty big surprise to me and it was just um, again I've, I've never really uh, tried this before uh, it's like putting these pieces around you, you can move them around and it's it's so different than actually painting with paint and a paintbrush so now I've got parchment paper that's that cloudy sheet I just laid on top of the rice paper I'm getting a couple sheets of that because I know I'm going to need that to help press out the bubbles and here is my tool that I made it's just a squeegee but it's a print making uh, squeegee that you can you know you can buy that from I, I suppose most art stores what I did was I put down some acrylic gloss medium or airbrush medium I think I, I tried both at different times uh, it doesn't really matter too much because uh, th this actually looks like the gloss medium but you know it's like a medium thickness and I put it underneath the rice paper I also put it above it and then what I'm putting on top of that uh, my hand is on top of parchment paper but you could also have you know wax paper or any kind of paper the whole point of that is to get the bubbles out and I did get some rippling you know it's not a perfect thing that I did here I probably could have soaked the paper first and then um, put it over the acrylic gloss medium but I didn't do that you know and it didn't really matter because this is all experimental and I, I certainly did not know where I was going I mean th that's why it's kind of fun to look back now now that the painting is done and I just remember enjoying this process of overlaying these very large sheets that were so simple the shapes were so simple but they were very bold and it was a very different approach for me because I, I like collage but I don't normally start out with it like this and what happened was it created like such a strong bold statement to begin with that it kind of stumped me for a while and that's why it sat in the other studio for so long I didn't quite know how to proceed with it I really liked what was happening but I, I needed time to think about what are my next steps and I talk a lot about this like in, in our membership group in that sometimes the best thing you can do when you're just not quite sure how to proceed um, if you're liking what you, you already have and it's not that it was too precious and that I was too scared to cover it up I really just wanted to think about my next steps like you know as you gain experience with different techniques there are many things you could do and then the question is well which which of those many things do you want to try uh, I've got a very obviously a very achromatic limited palette here and so one of the decisions was with color and the the shapes are very bold and I didn't know you know do I want to cover the entire thing up I've done that before too but I didn't want to do that so this presented a very different kind of challenge for me and I just want to enjoy you know the process and sometimes just I had multiple pieces going on and and I try to share with artists that I work with that you know I I think it's really good to have a lot of different things going on because then uh, when when you start to create something that you know you're maybe it's a surprise for you like this one was for me it's totally okay to just set it aside and let it just sit there and walk past it every day and, and you know maybe something will hit you and, and maybe not but you've got 10 other things going on I was preparing for this big show so I had I had literally at least 10 things going on um, and this one was really big so it kind of just got stuck behind some other panels and I just actually didn't even remember uh, what I had been doing when I brought it to the new studio so when I brought it out again it was like oh I really want to work back into this so 
Notice here, I'm just being very, very careful how I lay the paper down. I'm not just dropping it on top of like the layer of wet acrylic gloss medium. I'm laying it down like one edge and then going on to the other edge uh, so that I can lay it down and ensure that I don't get a lot of bubbles. 